Hello everyone and welcome back to another Figurehead Reviews video, and today we are taking a look at the Marvel Legends Spider Armor Mark III Spider-Man, part of the Demo Goblin Build-A-Figure wave. Here we have Spider-Man displayed in the front window, we see the Game Reverse logo there at the top, we got Spider-Man with his accessory Build-A-Figure piece, and then we see the Spider-Man logo there down at the bottom. On the side we do get some artwork there of Spider-Man wearing the Mark III Spider Armor swinging through the city, that is going to be the same artwork on both sides. On the back, we do get a product shot instead of that artwork, and then we do have a quick read-up. Peter Parker upgrades his spider suit with advanced technology known as Spider Armor Mark III. Then we do have all the other figures needed in this wave to complete the Demogoblin Build-A-Figure. At the very bottom, we do have the UPC code, so you can check with your local retailer to see if they have this in stock. But enough about that, let's get this open and take a look at Spider-Man. And here is the Spider-Man with the Mark III Spider Armor outside of the package. And as I mentioned with the Game Reverse tag on the box, this is based on a skin that is usable in the PlayStation 4 Spider-Man game. A game, unfortunately, that I have not played. I don't have a PS4, and certainly with a new console generation coming out right now, I'm not about to go get one. Plus, I don't have much time to play games anymore anyway. But I did look it up, and from what I can see in the game footage that I found, this armor does seem to be pretty accurate to what is depicted in the video game. So that is pretty cool. However, I will say there are some bummers with it, primarily in the articulation department. Uh, and you may notice, too, in some of these shots that his legs are rather bow-legged. Uh, out of the packaging, there is definitely some issues where I'm going to end up having to heat up the legs to straighten them out. So I always hate it when I have to do that. And he does only come with one accessory, but it's actually really cool. It is this little web effect here that goes on the face of another figure to give the impression that Spider-Man has webbed up their face and blinded them. And I think that is really cool, and I hope that we see this released with more figures, specifically, obviously, Spider-Man figures, in the future. So that way, we can actually have him doing battle with multiple baddies at once, and we can have some of these effects on there showing that he's incapacitated some of those guys. Now, when standing straight up, this Spider-Man is coming in at about 6 and 1 eighth inches tall, which makes him about 15.1 centimeters, so he's about the same height as that retro Scarlet Spider that I just reviewed not too long ago. But since he does not come with any other accessories other than his Build-A-Figure piece, which we'll look at later, let's go ahead and just jump in here, take a look at the paint and sculpt on the Spider-Man with a Mark III Spider Armor. And getting up close here, we can see a pretty cool looking head sculpt, almost kind of a what if Iron Spider, you know, it, it's very, uh, very much feels like something that would be designed by Tony Stark. And maybe it is, I don't know, like I said, I didn't play the game, but very cool looking. I like the overall design to it. Uh, the paint came out, eh, not too bad, I guess. I don't know how I feel about those eyes. I mean, again, I'm sure this is what it looks like. Uh, didn't really get to see too much of the front of the costume in the game footage I found because it was all the fighting, so you're looking at it from behind for the most part, but still very cool looking. Uh, looking down at the rest of the figure, we get some texture there on the red parts, which is very cool. Paint on the logo looks like it came out pretty decent, and then we can just see some more line work in there, uh, meant to look like armor plating. Uh, let's see, are those real scuffs or are those... I think those are real scuffs, but that's fine. It looks good on there, on the shoulder armor. Paint came out pretty decent. Uh, we're going to get one whipping hand here. And we can see on the back of the knuckles, these little diamonds that are painted on. And then on the other hand, we do get a fist, which, I mean, they both look good. It uh, looks like that's, I'm assuming, his web shooters for this particular version of the costume. Of course, if those are his web shooters, he wouldn't really whip, would he? He would shoot it out there so someone in the comment that's played the game well i guess that's actually could be the web shooter down there so this must be something else on the top let me know if you played the game and you know you can call out maybe some of these features on this armor uh on the back side we get this little piece here so again i assume this is maybe something in the game i i don't know if it's maybe uh a booster a jet pack of some sort maybe it serves as a glider or a parachute or something that comes out so these are all just speculations on uh, what it looks like to me. So again, if you played the game, let me know. I'd be more than happy to find out what it is. I do like the spine work there going down the back. That's pretty cool. Uh, one thing I will show here before we go into the articulation, though, as you bend this back, this piece is going to hit. I took my X-Acto knife and just kind of tucked it underneath there. Yeah, I'll show you. And... 
with the X-Acto knife, kind of just propped it out. So that way, when I wanted to pose him for one of my poses a little deeper, there you go. You can see that I was able to get it back further. And as long as you're careful, you should be fine with no scratches. So not too bad. Looking at his belt, at first I thought it was removable because, or not removable, but movable because of how far I could bring it up. But it looks like it is glued on the back end. So if it does come up, that glue should hold it in place. And pretty minimal paint on that. And we get that texture design again throughout. And now going down the legs, one thing, I don't know how well it's picking up here on the camera, but this red doesn't match this red. It is slightly brighter uh, red. This is a little bit more dull. Uh, I don't know if it just has to do with the sheen of the plastic or if it does have to do with paint. Uh, I would imagine it's paint because this piece is painted, this piece is molded, and then it looks like glued into the thigh. So this actually isn't paint. So that would be my guess. In fact, when looking at all the red, I assume that's, yeah, so that's paint too. Yeah, actually, now that I'm looking at it, too, it almost looks like maybe this red doesn't match this red. And I did want to point that out, too, that that's unfortunate, that the moment you bend it back, you lose the sculpt. That was something I wanted to mention. So as I'm looking at it now, though, yeah, this red doesn't match this red in person, and this red doesn't match that red. So you got a couple of inaccuracies that, if you're looking for it, you're going to find it. Uh, and then going down, we have this piece here that is going to be a separate molded piece as well. And the downside is that kind of inhibits a little bit of the articulation there going backwards. Not a ton of limiting on the side to side, but a little bit. And then real quick, just to show. So in order to get him to stand up straight, I had to bend his legs quite a ways out. Because if I put his legs straight down... That's what I got going on. So I am going to end up heat treating these and uh, trying to get them to straighten out there so that he stands up straight. Now looking at the articulation, you do have a head that can go all the way around with no issue. You can look down, eh, not too bad. You can look up pretty decent. And yeah, it just felt like it was giving me some more wobble, but not really. The arms do go up quite a ways, but I found that much like on other figures that we've seen, you kind of have to push down on the shoulder potentially to get it to go up. The glued on piece for the shoulder is quite a ways down. So really the it's going to hit the neck joint before you run into an issue. So no problems there, uh, just a little bit limiting. You do get full rotation on it though. You have a bicep swivel, double jointed elbows, and then each of the hands are going to have rotation and the same hinge on each of the hand. Uh, I kind of showed you already the crunch, so there's forward and then backwards, but again, you can get a little bit further backwards if you do, I mean, I guess you could force it, but if you also lift that up. He does have a waist rotation. You have legs that can come apart quite a ways, kick forward, not too bad, backwards there, upper thigh cut, double jointed knees. And then he does have the hinge and ankle pivot. And really my biggest complaint with the articulation is this body kind of feels more like a Bucky Cap type of articulation versus a Spider-Man articulation. So some of the poses, like if you're trying to get him to do legs up, you know, some of the poses I had in the 360 shot, uh, it's, I don't know, it's, it's not as poseable as like the Bucky Cap. So it's still not bad. You just got to work with it a bit more. And that is going to do it for this review, everyone. So overall, the downside to this figure is that it doesn't pose like a Spider-Man figure. So it's going to be a little bit bulkier. Uh, but on the bright side, I mean, any kind of Spider-Man figure is pretty cool, right? I, I do like getting all the different versions, even if it's based off a game that I haven't even been able to play. So I think that is neat to have just a multiple Spider-Verse type uh, things going on, and uh, I'll find a home for him for sure. I'm thinking about starting a Gamerverse shelf, actually, since the uh, the half Gamerverse wave uh, is coming out here. Well, I are, it's already out. I have it coming soon. So uh, those reviews will be coming shortly, too. So, But, uh, yeah, I, I mean, if you're a Spider-Man fan, I think it's worth the pickup. Uh, definitely a, a cool-looking figure. Uh, just... Kind of like I was saying, if you're looking to get some dynamic Spider-Man style posing, you might have some difficulty with some of the uh, more agile looking poses. You can still do some decent stuff, you know, even just like some hero poses like this here. So I, I think it's worth it. 
But anyway, as I said, that is it for this review, everyone. Make sure to hit that thumbs up if you like it. Subscribe for more content just like this. And as always, thanks for watching my videos, and have a great day.